In a couple of weeks, the single most important media event in the United States will take place. It's the Super Bowl, of course. But we aren't here to talk about the game. We're here to talk about the commercials. The very, very, very expensive commercials. This year, a 30-second spot will cost $5.5 million. That fills up an entire screen in just $100,000 bills, a denomination that never went into circulation. If you put 5.5 million $1 bills end-to-end, -end, they'd stretch 542 miles. That's longer than the driving distance between Pittsburgh and Ottawa. What's up with this madness? I'm William Spaniel, and this is the game theory of Super Bowl ads. Why do 30 seconds of airtime cost $5.5 million? In this video, I'll give you six reasons, ranging from the straightforward to the strategically layered. Number one, viewership. A couple of the reasons why ads are expensive are obvious, but they're necessary to go through as a preface to the more interesting explanations. Put simply, the Super Bowl is a ratings behemoth. In peak years, more than 110 million will watch just in the United States. Even in off years, it still approaches 100 million. The more people who watch, the more people who see the ads, and the more companies are willing to pay to place those ads. But it's not just about the ratings. Number two is to pay for the buzz. With normal commercials, companies pay for you, the viewer, to watch their messages. Super Bowl ads are a different beast. They can become cultural phenomenon. People will talk about them the next few days at work and with their friends. Companies are willing to pay a premium to extend their reach beyond just the traditional viewership and start to gain a grassroots movement. Number three, constructing common knowledge. Those first two points were straightforward, right? Well, this is where things get interesting, strategic, and in need of a little bit of game theory. Imagine you owned a gold bullion storage company. You wouldn't be surprised if fees were to begin eyeing your establishment. Clearly, you need to invest in some security, and a lock is a good place to start. But there are layers to a lock's effectiveness. The minimum goal is to keep thieves from breaking in. However, it's not the best outcome. Even if a thief sees that your door is locked, they still may think that they could break in with enough effort. The best lock in the world may still stop them, but they may nevertheless cause plenty of property damage to your building in the meantime. What you need is a way to communicate how great your lock is. And that's where a commercial might come into play. Imagine my lock company spent a ton of money on a short ad spot. The commercial begins with me shooting a bullet into the lock. Then I show you that the lock still hasn't broken. It's keeping the door locked. You might think to yourself, whoa, that's a great lock. That's what I should use for my business. This is the exact commercial that Master Lock aired in 1974. But the reason that the ad was so good went a step beyond that. A potential thief, who has no interest in buying a lock, may very well have caught the commercial. And so when they approach your storage unit and see the lock, they may realize that there's no point in even trying. Thus, you get your best outcome. And that extra deterrent power is worth paying a premium for. In turn, the lock company is willing to buy the commercial time to create the extra deterrent power and pay a premium for it. This effect goes beyond locks. Creating brand awareness is important for consumers who will pass the product on to someone else, and they want the end recipient to think that the quality is high. Again, particularly salient commercials are the easiest way to do this. Number four, costly signals. Bear with me for a moment, because this one gets complicated. Imagine you saw a commercial touting some allegedly amazing books. Clearly, the seller has an incentive to lie to you to make a quick buck. It's also true that most books are terrible. So, at first thought, 
your best bet would be to not buy any of them. But expensive commercials, and I mean expensive, can actually signal credibility. Even if a large percentage of viewers were to buy a book, the ridiculous ad price would still mean that the seller is losing money. Now, you might just think that the seller would be crazy to even engage in this process. But there's actually a method to the seller's madness. You see, for the seller to turn a profit, they will need each person to make multiple purchases. And buyers will only make multiple purchases if the product is of high quality. The seller has private information of the high quality and can credibly reveal that information with an expensive commercial. The buyer can reason that if the seller had a bad product, they would only make a single sale. The commercial would therefore result in a net loss, and so the seller wouldn't bother with it. Only a seller with a good product would be willing to pay for that commercial. Thus, the consumer can become confident that the product is worth taking a shot on. There are limits to this, of course. If the commercial were basically free, bad sellers wouldn't see it as a barrier. Smart consumers would see through the risk and choose not to make the purchase. It also doesn't work with big ticket items with huge profit margins and single sales. Those sellers would not need multiple purchases to turn a profit. Smart consumers would again see through the potential lie and not make the purchase here either. Number five, coordinating consumers. Some products become inherently better the more people there are who use them. Operating systems are a great example of this. Even if there were a clearly superior option, it might still not see mass adoption. A business, for example, might not want to spend the time retraining people on the new brand. Commercials with an enormous viewership are a solution. In 1984, Apple ran an enthralling ad, creating not only the perception that it had good computers, but also that others think that and will adopt them as well. And that's valuable. The more people that adopt it, the more attractive it looks to adopt yourself. The ability to create a virtuous cycle like this is super valuable. And so a $5.5 million premium does not look so bad by contrast. Number six, self-fulfilling expectations. Speaking of virtuous cycles, what if Super Bowl advertisements get a lot of viewers because they get a lot of viewers? Okay, hear me out on this one. Imagine you are watching a regular football game and they go to break. Your expectation is that the commercials will be boring. It would be a perfect time to go get some snacks instead. And the advertisement that comes on, well, it's no big deal that you missed it. Now imagine it's the big day. You have an expectation that the commercials will be great, and so you don't leave as soon as they come on. The company knows that you have this expectation, and that airing a boring commercial would damage their brand reputation. So they only air the good ones. And that justifies your initial decision to stick around for them in the first place. Which in turn justifies the $5.5 million price tag that is required to air one of these commercials. So why did John Nash cross the road? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care.